So it is the day before uh, the bison experiment. We're gonna be throwing, you know, 100 plus atlatl darts and four shafts into a bison, testing the, you know, penetration, the wound cavity, the sort of, you know, catastrophic failure one of the projectiles could actually take, as well as we're gonna be butchering out um, the entire bison with stone tools. So the question is, of stone tools, obviously we know a steel blade is going to cut far better than you know a stone tool, a stone knife, um, anything of that extent. I mean, it's it's steel. It's going to serve its purpose and it's going to cut. When it comes to stone, what are the best options? What are the ideal make and model of a you know a, a stone knife? Is it something that's fixed? Is it something that's hafted with some pine pitch? For this, I'm going to test a couple different styles of, of stone tools that would be used in game processing. So there's a variety of blades and those blades all serve a purpose and I'm gonna show you exactly kind of what those purposes are based off the blades. First and foremost, I have a bag of stone flakes. Now some of these flakes are just flakes that I picked up my napping floor and then some of the flakes have a little bit more purpose to them. They have a little bit more design, if you will. All of these right here, or something I called backed flakes. Now, I don't know if that's an archeological term or anything to that extent, but why I call them backed flakes are simply, my goal was to leave a piece of the cortex on there. And they are backed by that cortex, making it very easy to hold in the hand. As you can see on this blade here, I got one cutting edge and then I have my backing. This allows me to really grip into that blade and have something to hold on to. Even when I look at the blade in profile, I can see that this is thicker, it's a better handhold, it can really you know, cut into a ligament or a tendon. Where I would use these is probably some of those initial cuts, getting through that hide, getting through that hair, and then eventually getting into that animal. Next, I just have traditional stone flakes. These are all popped off in that you know, thinning process, relatively thin, has that bulb of percussion on there, gives me something to hold on to. And the advantage of this is I've got a lot of edges that I can cut with from here to here to here, even the area that I hold. I can kind of rotate this in my hand and manipulate it as I see fit. Now, the downside of these, in my experience, is you definitely run the risk of, of cuts. Any one of these little teeth, any one of these little edges can definitely bite into your hand, especially if you're trying to hold this guy and really cut it into some meat. Having done two bison already and plenty of hogs and elk and mule deer with stone tools, I expect some cuts. Hopefully, uh, it's nothing too crazy, but in my mind, my back flakes sitting over there are gonna serve a little bit better now all of these guys right here are essentially elongated flakes. Um, not necessarily pulled off of a blade core or anything like that, but they're just longer. I got a longer cutting edge. If I look at this flake here, I've got a nice probably four, four and a half inch cutting edge that's gonna really allow me to get into some meat and do some long cuts. These are a little bit shorter and I have a couple other longer ones, but these are elongated flakes also pulled off in that thinning process. My Acheulean hand ax. Uh, there is a video floating out there with me actually crafting this one. This one was done essentially with just a hammer stone. Now why this is a great tool, this is that hand ax. This really gives me the opportunity to grab onto this back bulb right here get a nice good grip and saw through tendons, saw through ligaments. It's got a nice edge on it that's relatively thin and with a couple hammer stone strikes, I can resharpen it. More importantly, it's a big blade. If I gotta get into a joint or I gotta start separating some ribs out, this guy right here is gonna give me that opportunity to really cut into some meat. Now transitioning from that Acheulean, kind of going with the teardrop blade. This is again, something a little bit bigger. It is just one piece that I've worked into kind of a teardrop shape that gives me 360 degrees of cutting surface, but it gives me a little bit more of a handle. I can really hold on to this. I can saw through tendons. I can get in between, you know, bones to pull out meat. It's kind of a step down from the Acheulean hand ax, but ultimately it's gonna allow me to, you know, cut through meat, cut through tendons, really get into that animal and uh, start taking it apart. Okay, I have two small blades here, and these are what I'm gonna use for some of my finer cuts. Now, I consider these fixed blades. They are one piece. Even though this one is hafted with some pine pitch, and this one has a small little cutout 
for like a little finger weld with some leather wrapped around there. These are essentially one piece of stone, smaller blade, easier to manipulate getting into those tight spots, but uh, it will definitely cut into that animal. The last two blades I have are actually hafted into uh, wooden handles. Now, this one here I've used a couple times before. There's still some blood residue, and it was a little bit wider and coming out to a little bit more of an elongated tip, but it's just been worked down and um, they're great. They're, they're absolutely great. It gives me a good handle to hold on to if I really got to, you know, cut some meat or if I'm looking to thin some pieces out. This sort of blade with this handle gives me the opportunity to have a good solid grip, especially when you're dealing with something large like a bison. There's going to be blood. There's going to be different liquids and God knows what else coming out of that thing. But this gives me a nice wooden grip that's kind of oiled. It's got a good toughness to it. And probably tomorrow before I roll out, I'll throw some pitch on here, give me a little bit of, you know, variation in the handle from the wood and it will just give me something better to hold on to. This one is a little bit different. So in the past, I've used a lot of corner tanged uh, knives where you can be cutting into the animal. You can let go of your knife. It hangs by the lanyard. You can remove your meat. You can kind of work around, do what you need to do. And then when it's time, you can flip that blade back up into your hand. Separating all the rib meat, I can cut, 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 let go of this, remove that rib meat, flip this up in my hand, and get it back into action. It's not supposed to go around my neck. It's just a wrap around my hand, have the ability to free my hands up, not lose my blade in that butchering process, flip it back up and get it into action. So both of these are just seated in a wooden handle and held in place with pine pitch glue. Between my back blades, my raw flakes, my hand axe, my little teardrop blade, um, my full tang blades, my solid stone blades, and um, my wooden hafted blades, all those are gonna give me different advantages when I start cutting into that bison. The most important thing I want people to take away from this is something I call ground truth. It is the truth that you will obtain by experience, by actually being on the ground, seeing, experiencing it, observing it. And there's different ways ground truth can come to you. It can come to you by you actually doing said name task or experiencing it firsthand or witnessing somebody else do it, taking that knowledge and then applying uh, your own practices to obtain your own ground truth. So when I start breaking into that bison, you'll experience some of the ground truth that uh, I routinely come across when I'm processing out any sort of game, especially a bison. Like flakes to open, knives to separate. How's that coming down? Oh, huh. nice. That was one of the arrow points. Yeah, yeah. there's nice arrow points.
decided to just so you can track it. a joint I can get through. Yeah. Yeah. Found another one? Or to break. <laughs> no, it just popped out of the half. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Oh, there's a. Oh, fuck me. It's a big broken bone. 
Grease up. Yep. Last edge of the, the rib line. Okay. Yep. I think we've got most of the weight now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, drop. I've only ever done a weight everything said and done we were able to completely uh, take apart that bison in about four four and a half hours we used a variety of tools as you saw from some of the hafted blades the discoidal flakes back flakes truly hand axe every single tool really did its job every you know single tool that we use really provided certain advantages in that butchering process any of the flakes or even some of the back flakes really allowed myself and the other individuals the opportunity to really perform those you know first cuts getting through that um, that tough skin getting through that hide because essentially those backed flakes and those discoidal flakes or those raw flakes really just served as extremely sharp knives giving us that real easy cutting advantage once we got into the process of starting to remove that hide that's when a lot of the hafted blades um, even some of the elongated flakes wrapped in the form of leather to take off that hide gave us that really optimal cutting advantage. We weren't cutting into the meat, we are removing most of the hide and that's ultimately what we wanted to do. Once we progressed and we opened the bison up and we were able to remove the hide and remove the intestines, the heart, liver, lungs, things to that extent, really start to take apart the animal. It really transitioned into a lot of those 
uh, half the blade. You can see that obviously something with a handle is gonna be the most optimal. It's just gonna give the user a lot more control, a lot more comfort, and they're gonna be able to cut a lot longer, especially when it comes to something like a bison that is huge and requires several hours. A good hafted knife, a good hafted blade is really gonna be ideal for taking that animal apart. The only damage this uh, Shulian hand axe really took was um, just a couple little small flakes along the side and then the tip actually breaking off. Bottom line, a couple little hits with a hammer stone to give it a little bit more sharper point and this would be back in action. Uh, I know there was a lot of stuff going on in that video, but uh, I appreciate everyone watching and uh, we'll see you out there. Thanks.